What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a declutter video. Now the way I do my declutters is a little bit different. I'm not gonna shuffle through my entire collection because when I declutter things, I like to kind of put them aside and ponder them for a little while or find out if I find myself wanting it one day when I'm doing my makeup, like man, whatever happened to that one thing? Oh wait, I think I meant to declutter it. So then I'll like pull it out of my collection or out of my declutter pile and then try to put it back in my rotation to see if I can get some use out of it again. So that's the way I do my declutters. And um, this is kind of a follow up to my empties video. I had them all kind of in one big bag. I did my empties video. I'll link it up here if you guys wanna go check it out. But this was the rest of that bag that was like full of stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and just move it on out. Get the out of my house, guys. All right, so I do have a few things that I'm kind of like conflicted about, but let's start with the things I know for sure I'm going to be decluttering. This is the Too Faced Cream. This is like their cream formula lipstick. It's their little bullet version of a lipstick. It's in the shade Double Bubble. It is hot pink. I do not like it. I just don't wear this color. Not only that, but this is just not a good formula, especially for a color like this, because if you want a color that's gonna be bright and like a bold lip, this is a really sheer formula. It's just a really strange lipstick all around. I got it in the Too Faced mystery box for the holidays and I've just never liked it. But you know, if somebody I know likes that, which I don't think I know anybody who will, but you know, that's an easy thing to pass on. I'm gonna keep with the lip products because I have a lot of lip products. Um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about, these are two of the Revlon Balm Stains. I've had these for a really long time. Um, they are kind of banged up. I got quite a bit of use out of them before I decided to just get rid of them. I just don't use them anymore. They're kind of old. They're pretty, I'll give them that. This one I might actually keep. It's like the berry one, and I don't really have anything like it in my collection, but we'll put it in that, we'll put that in the conflicted pile for now. But this one, on the other hand, this is in the shade Romantic. It's like a orangey red shade. And I just don't think it's super special. I don't really like the formula that much. I have decluttered the more pinky version of this. And it's just like one of those things where I don't wanna keep it in my collection if I'm just not gonna use it. And I mean, that's, that's all it boils down to. It has nothing to do with whether I like this or not or whether I think it's good or not. It's just one of those things where I have a lot of lip products I wanna get through. And this one is just not at the top of the priority list. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on. Peace out, Revlon Balm Stain. Next thing, this is the Tardis lip paint. This is in the shade Birthday Suit. Now I got this for the, as like part of the birthday package for Sephora. Um, I don't really understand this lipstick. It's kind of weird to me. It's like, I mean, okay, the color is okay. It's not my thing, technically speaking, but at the same time, it's not, un, you know, it's not like a deal breaker for me. It's the formula that gets me with this. It's really greasy. It's hard to wear. It's hard to touch up. It's hard to, it's just not, it's not comfortable. Like it's just really, you know what I mean? It's just really greasy. It's such a strange formula in my opinion to have such a bold saturated lip color in. So it's like as much as I love how pigmented and how smooth and how even the opacity is, it's just a strange formula to put something like this in and it doesn't dry down. So it's almost like applying a bullet lipstick in cream form that's greasy. It's not like, like I like the ColourPop Ultra Satins. Those are like to me applying a bullet lipstick in cream form in a way that's actually gonna sit on your lips and stay there and be comfortable and wearable. But this is just a very weird formula. It's just a weird, it's just, I don't understand it. All right, the next lip product I have here, this is the Maybelline matte lipstick, I guess is what they're called. They're like the bullets. This is in the shade Nude Nuance. Now, if you are in, on the hunt for a dupe for the Kat Von D Lolita lipstick, this is your dupe. Touch of Spice is not the dupe. This is the dupe for the Lolita lipstick, the, especially the bullet form of it. This is so similar to Lolita by Kat Von D. I just don't wear it. I don't really wear um, bullet lipsticks a whole lot. And I find that this on me, it just looks a little too sheer. Like if I'm gonna wear a shade like this, I want it to be opaque and I want it to be dry and completely matte. I'm not saying this is a bad lipstick. Like I said, if you like really creamy bullet lipstick formulas and you like this Maybelline formula and you want a dupe for Lolita, this is your dupe. It's called Nude Nuance. 
I think everybody used to say the touch of spice was the dupe, but no, I've I got both of them like a long time. This is old. <laughs> I got both both of them a long time ago. I you know tested them side by side. Lolita, this is an underrated dupe, an underrated dupe for Kat Von D's Lolita. Now I'm gonna talk about a mascara. I got this in the Too Faced holiday box along with that lipstick. This is just terrible. I don't know whose idea it was to ever ever make a mascara one that looks like this. I think I've actually talked about it in a video before, but holy Jesus, this is ridiculous. Like, I mean, come on. Like, look how big this is compared to my nose, compared to my eye. Like, who could use this? Like, uh, I don't know how many times Stemphalopagus is gonna come up in my videos, but yeah, like who is this mascara for? I'd actually never even heard of it until I got that mystery box, but as soon as I saw the tube, I was like, the hell is this? <laughs> no, it's just, I, I've never, I tried using it on my top lashes. That was kind of a mess. Uh, there's no way I'm going to use it on my bottom lashes. And I'm not the type of person that's going to have multiple mascaras for my top and bottom lashes. I just don't do it. Not generally speaking, but maybe someday if I find one I like and I just decide that that's a thing. But for now, this is just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, no wonder they put it in that mystery box. They're probably trying to phase this out, probably trying to get rid of it because I guarantee nobody's purchasing this. Like, why? Like, what? what is this? Why? I don't get it. All right, next thing I'm going to talk about, this is the Wet n Wild Retractable Brow Pencil. So the thing about this is not necessarily the shade, but it's just the formula. It drags, it kind of pills up. It doesn't really apply in like a uniform way it will pick up on itself so if you kind of start drawing it on your brow and kind of like filling in your brow and you go over where you just drew a line it'll just like pull away the product that it just laid down it's super weird i don't know anybody that might get use out of it because i don't know anybody that would want it however i think it's supposed to be the dupe for the anastasia brow definer because if you can see there's like an acute triangle here on the end and i think that is what this is supposed to be a dupe for and i think they probably nailed the shape i've never actually tried the brow definer but i think they probably nailed the shape it's just the formula that's not any good on this and that's why i'm gonna get rid of it so peace out wet and wild all right the next thing i'm gonna be decluttering this is the Too faced pore fashion or no no the benefit pore professional I hate this stuff. I hate it. When I back when I bought it, I bought it probably over a year ago at this point. It I just never liked it from the very beginning. It it pilled up. It just did weird things on my face and made did weird things to my foundation. And I only put it like on the areas where I even have like, you know, more pronounced pores and it was just terrible. So that was that's like a no-brainer for me. I'm just going to pass that on. I'm not sure why I even still have it, but get out of here okay so i have so many wet and wild things but anyway um this is the nyx matte liquid liner i hate this stuff i freaking hate it so i like the brush um i need to try like their normal formula because the brush is actually really good it's really thin and um the formula is really black my gripe about this is the fact that this is a matte liquid liner and it sounds good on paper it's like yes a matte liquid liner that is perfect that is exactly what i want but this is it cracks so because it's matte because it dries down it starts to crack sometimes even before you're done putting your wing on like i don't understand it just cracks and crumbles it looks bad it doesn't last all day because like i said it doesn't really move with your skin so it just i i don't like it i gotta get rid of it um again i don't know anybody who would actually use this and most of these things that i'm getting rid of are things that i just do not like so i think that's why i'm just gonna throw this one out because i don't wish this upon anyone else i don't want to be like here you take this it sucks. All right, so here's some other things I'm gonna declutter. This is mainly just because they're really old. I've had these forever. These are the Maybelline Color Tattoos. I have one in the shade Silver Strike. I have one in the shade Pomegranate Punk, which I actually really love this. It's just so old. And then of course I have Bad to the Bronze, which is like the iconic one shadow look kind of thing. They actually discontinued Pomegranate Punk. Actually, this one doesn't look like it's drying up. Well, maybe it is, I can't tell. Yeah, it's just all crumbly and weird. I don't know. It's just not, and it's not super special, but this one, strangely enough, doesn't look like it is as dried up as the others. And Silver Strike is actually a beautiful silver. Holy crap. It is such a nice silver. 
it took me a while to find this silver. Like it was the silver I was looking for when I found it. Like it's so metallic and so reflective. But if you can see, it's kind of cracking around the edge here. So I just don't really use it. I think it's just really old. Um, it's just, wow, this is interesting. Maybe I'll keep this just to play with it because it's like playing with Play-Doh. All right, so here goes nothing, guys. You should have seen, oh, that was cool. This is a Maybelline color tattoo in the flesh. And I am destroying it. Let's just cut it up. Interesting. This is cool. Oh my God, this is way too much fun. Oh my God, this is like so much fun. Okay, so we gotta do it to the others, you know? Let's, let's do it to the others too. Pomegranate punk. Man, this is like, I've had this for years. Let's do it like this. This is definitely not as dry as Silver Strike. Like it is, I have to scrape this out of the pot. Ooh, I think I can actually repurpose these little things too. Sweet, I can use them for like, oh sweet when I scrape out foundation and concealer packages. That's what I'll use these little things for. Last one, bad to the bronze. This is just like pomegranate punk. This one is not coming out in cake form like Silver Strike. Watch. Wow, that's pretty. Hey, Maybelline, make a color tattoo that's pomegranate punk, silver strike, and bad to the bronze all mixed. Ooh. Well, that was fun. That was worth every penny I spent on those three years ago. I had some fun too with some expired eyeshadow. Chateau. Imagine if it were called eyeshadow. How is that not an eyeshadow palette? Eyeshadow. Get it? Man. Um, let's do another. Oh no. I want to destroy this one too. Oh, you know what the hell? Let's do it. Why not? <laughs> okay, so this one's also very old and therefore not something I would ever feel comfortable giving to someone else. Like I said, because it's old. Like the, I've had this for years and they don't even make it anymore. It's been discontinued. Um, and I don't think that it's necessarily harmful to use, not at least on myself. I just, like I said, it's not something I would feel comfortable passing on to someone else because if they had some sort of terrible reaction to it, I would feel terrible. And yeah, anyway, this is the Maybelline Master Highlight crosshatch pattern kind of thing. Um, do you know what we're about to do? Because that's the turn that this video has taken tonight. Part of me wants to see what it would look like panned. But then the other part of me just wants to, um... Don't work there. Ah, oh, yes. Exactly what I was hoping would happen. Little blocks of it are coming out. Oh, this is so cool. This is cool. <laughs> Oh, the whole thing's gonna come out. Ah! It's like smooth and flat on the back. How cool. Oh, I don't want to ruin them. I don't want to ruin them. They're so perfect. Ah, the perfect little block of eyeshadow. Kind of, it's blush.
That was fun. You have to admit. Now to the, <laughs> back to the point of this video. Oh God, I'm going to have to like resist destroying other things. But no, I think a lot of the stuff I can still actually pass on. The next thing I'm going to get rid of, this is actually something that I know somebody will actually hopefully really love and use. It's just not something that I ever use. I bought it a long, long time ago and I never really used it that much. I did use it, like I use it a few times, so I kind of am familiar with the way it works. I'm not a huge fan of the formula. I don't think that it is intense enough for me or for my tastes. I'm sorry if you see things floating around in here. Oftentimes my living room turns into the upside down without warning. But anyway, this is the CoverGirl Nudes palette. They had a few of these. They had like roses, nudes, and then they had another one. I don't remember which that, what that one was called, but this is the only one I ever owned. It was their like true naked. It was like kind of their knockoff, not really their knockoff of the naked palettes, but like their version of them because they had three um, and the same tones as the original naked palettes by Urban Decay. This is just not, I don't know. I just don't use it. It's a good palette. I think somebody that I know will probably use it. Somebody who mainly uses neutrals and just browns and stuff. It's just not for me. It's just taking up space in my collection. I would much rather use a lot of the other things that I have over this. So peace out. Um, all right, so I have a few more palettes here. This is the NYX Avant Pop palette. Again, this is just something that I don't use. It's not a bad palette. There are a few bad shades in here, I'll admit. Like there are a few shades in here I just don't like. Don't really like this glittery black shade because it's just kind of chalky. Um, I love this gold shade. It's beautiful. I actually like this green shade too. Not a huge fan of this pink shade, this purpley magenta shade. Not a huge fan of these two up here. They're kind of chalky, but at the same time, it's, it's a good palette for somebody who's like just now getting into color, if you know what I mean. Like if you aren't sure whether you like color or whether you're going to, this is a good palette to experiment with because it's not super expensive. It's actually really cheap. I think when I got it, I got it as like a buy one, get one from NYX with their like when they were on sale at Ulta. So yeah. Um, I am just gonna pass this on. I don't use it. I have so many more colorful eyeshadow palettes now. I bought this when I was first starting to get into color and yeah, I'm peace out next time on pop. Um, these two are some palettes that I actually bought for Halloween last year. Now these are the Wet n Wild cream paint palettes. I got them because I thought I was going to use them and I just didn't like I, well, I use them a little bit, but they're just not great. Like, I don't know, cream makeup like this is kind of weird because it starts to crack after a while. So it's just not something that I really like to use. There are some pretty shades in here of stuff. But honestly, I just don't know what I would use it for. I think it's mo mostly for like people who were gonna do like clown makeup and stuff, which is a good idea. It's just the purple, there's like no pigment in. So I wouldn't even consider that like a cream paint. The blue is pretty cool. Um, the red is just beautiful, but I don't know how I would use this. It's too greasy to be used as like an eyeshadow base. Like it would be really cool to use as an eyeshadow base, but it's just too greasy. Like I just don't see how it would work. I can't keep these around. I just don't need them. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna be getting rid of is the CYO Matte Eyeshadow Matte and Eyelid in the shade Deep Thought. Now, I love this, <laughs> don't get me wrong. It is a beautiful, like cool toned brown, or like a neutral brown transition shade. But at the same time, I have so many of them that I just don't need this. Like I don't really want to depot it because it's just like not worth the trouble. I could just give it to somebody who will actually use it, but I think it's a great formula. I do recommend this if you need like a matte neutral brown shadow, but who doesn't have the shade in 400 eyeshadow palettes? You know what I mean? I don't need this little single shadow. I have nothing against single shadows. I like keeping them around, but I like the ones that are unique. Like I like keeping like my shimmer or glitter or something like I have to, it has to be like a unique single shadow. This is just not worth keeping to me. So peace out. All right, so the things I'm conflicted about. <sighs> I was hoping by the end of this video I would know whether I wanted to keep this or not. This is Wet n Wild Liquid Catsuit in the shade Lavender Crown. This is one of their newest liquid catsuit liquid lipsticks and it is a lavendery purple shade. As you can see on my lips, it looks almost bluish gray. I've worn this a few times and honestly, I haven't really found a way that I just really love wearing it. It's not my favorite. It's not something I'm going to choose other over other things in my collection and it's not something that I would ever 
you know, it's just never going to be at like the forefront of my collection. I'm not super into pastels. I'm not super into lavender because it makes my teeth look yellow. As you can see, they look a tad yellow, not super yellow because there is blue in this. But at the same time, it's just not my favorite. And like I said, it's just not something I'm reaching for. But again, I'm kind of conflicted about it. So I don't know. Maybe I'll, I don't know. I'm just conflicted about it. Let me know what you guys think of how it looks on my lips. If this is something that you would like to see me use in a future video, please let me know and I would be happy to hold on to it. Um, this is another thing I'm kind of conflicted about, which is what I was just talking about, but at the same time, I just don't use it. This is the Revlon Balm Stain. This is the shade Crush. It's called, this is the shade Crush. It's like a berry balm stain. I have, like when I used to wear this, I would get so many compliments on it. It's been so long since I've had this or it's been so long since I got this, I've had it forever. I just I don't know, I just don't use it. And that's the thing, I just don't see myself using it. So I think I'm just gonna get rid of it because you know, if I need something that's similar, I would rather it be like a lip gloss or something. This is just, I think I am gonna have to get rid of it. So I was conflicted about it, but I'm gonna go with my gut and getting rid of it. Now, another thing I'm conflicted about is the foundation I have on right now. If you'll see, it looks a bit pink. Um, it's strange because when I first got it, it didn't look like I thought it was a good shade. I don't know if it was because I got it during the summer. So again, I'm kind of conflicted about it because I don't know if I should just, I've, I've used quite a bit of it. I mean, the plunder was all the way down to here, so you can see how much I've used, but I love the packaging. I think that it's simple, minimal. I love this foundation formula. I just think I need to maybe get one that is not so pink. But I just don't know if they make one yet because when I got this, this is a very, very new brand. I'm assuming that they have since expanded their foundation line, despite the fact that they launched with a pretty decent amount of foundations in their line to begin with. I'm kind of curious if they've come out with one that is less gray toned because once it does dry on my face, it kind of turns pink. And as you can see, it just doesn't match my neck well. So I don't know. I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to keep it around to mix in with some other foundations and that way I can stretch out my other foundations. And at the same time, I don't know, I'm conflicted. So I will update you guys on this. I might hold on to it. I might get rid of it. I'm just not sure. Like I said, I think the most likely thing for me to do would be to try and use it to stretch out, make my other foundations last a little bit longer, if you know what I mean, because I love the formula of this. So I hate to get rid of it. I've used so much of it, I wanted, I want to empty it. So there's one more product that I'm kind of conflicted about. I've mentioned this in disappointing products and gripes videos. This is the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Palette. I'm wearing it today. I'm wearing the blue and the green layered. I am just so conflicted about this. It is just not the greatest highlighting palette. At the same time, I do want to hold on to it until I get Opal Flashes Jade because I want to compare the green to that mermaid highlight to Opal Flashes Jade by Becca. I want to make sure, I just want to compare all of those. Um, I thought about, and I think I mentioned this in one of the videos where I talked about this, I thought about depotting the shades that I like, which would be basically just this one. Um, this, yeah, this one right here because it's not glittery. My complaint isn't the fact that these are super um, weird in color. Like, I think that's kind of cool. My complaint is the glitter and it's not in all of them. So the blue one doesn't really have a ton of glitter, but the formula is just really weird and kind of gummy as compared to the other Mega Glow highlights that I have in the individual pans. So I'm either going to depot the ones I can use because I do like this one, the one in the top left corner. I think it's really pretty. Um, and the blue, like I said, is decent because there's no glitter in it, but at the same time, I don't need this huge palette. So I'm thinking I, if I have any space in any of my magnetic palettes, I'm gonna try and depot what I can and get rid of the rest and declutter the rest to somebody else because yeah, this is just, this was a, this was kind of a bust for me. I'm not gonna lie. I know a lot of people love it, but it was just a uh, kind of a bust. So anyway, that will do it guys. If you made it this far, Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the little detour I took into destroying some makeup. If you guys want to see more stuff like that, there is a channel called The Makeup Breakup, if you've never heard of it. And they're like the all-knowing mighty beauty power that goes through and destroys a lot of makeup products just to kind of figure out what's in them and to see how long it takes to pan them and to see how many pumps is in a foundation. And just, I don't know, they just do all kinds of cool stuff. So I highly recommend that channel. 
Um, but anyway, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber and you want to be, just hit the subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you guys next time.